Welcome everybody to Communication Skills, Keeping the Conversation Going. Now this resource is designed for learners who need to develop their interactive conversation skills. In particular, the art of keeping a conversation going. Now being able to engage in conversations is an essential skill in supporting learners to have positive life outcomes. And yet many young learners have difficulty holding conversations with strangers or with people in positions of authority. Now this resource is going to provide some basic ideas for how to support learners who might be at the lower steps of their learning progressions, those who have high anxiety around conversations, or learners who have English as a second language and are still coming to terms with the conventions of English conversations. Now before we begin, we have to address what is a conversation. This resource is based on the idea that a conversation requires reciprocity and reflexivity. Now, reciprocity relates to our need to give something back to the other speaker. And in most cases, this is in the form of sharing something from ourselves. So a conversation requires that both people get something out of it. Reflexivity relates to our need to adapt ourselves to the other person. Both speakers must attempt to meet the other person in order for a conversation to occur. So without these two things, a conversation can occur, but what you'll find is that one person is working much harder than the other, and neither of those two people are really getting much out of the conversation. Now the problem we're going to address in this particular resource is stilted conversation in which utterances are terminal and are neither reciprocal or reflexive. Now an utterance is simply a part of speech, such as a sentence or a phrase. So let's have a look at an example of some terminal utterances. Now this conversation is a typical conversation that I as a tutor may have with a student as we're meeting in the corridor. Hi Andrew, how are you? Good thanks. How's your day been? Good. How's your new job going? Yeah, it's okay. And as you can see there, although this is a conversation in a sense, it lacks reciprocity and it lacks reflexivity. All of Andrew's statements are terminal. That means he's not opening up uh, any opportunities for me to speak back to him. And in the end, the conversation begins to look more like an interrogation than a conversation. Now, in my experience, this kind of conversation is not the result of Andrew just wanting to escape from the tutor, but rather Andrew having not absorbed some of the social conventions of conversations for a variety of reasons. Step one, we're going to talk about the catch and pass metaphor for developing the idea of reciprocity and reflexivity. So conversations can be thought of as two or more people passing a ball back and forward between each other. Unless each person passes the ball back to the other, the game is unable to continue. So if you imagine two people throwing a ball to each other, a rugby ball, a baseball, whatever it is, out in the field, back and forward, for both of them to enjoy that process and for it to work, they both have to be engaged in the process. Now, catching the ball can be thought of as responding to the other person. A good catch requires sharing information with the other person. Passing can be thought of as asking a question of the other person. This requires them to then catch and pass the ball back to you. The catch and pass process then becomes a pattern that can be practiced in classrooms. So let's have a look at a conversation and see if we can identify the utterances that are catches and the utterances that are passes. Hi Andrew, how are you? Pass the ball to Andrew. Good thanks, I've just finished my communication class. There's some good stuff in there. Catching, so Andrew has caught the ball, he's giving some information about himself, he's sharing, and then he passes it. Have you ever seen the material? I have, and I found it really useful in this job. The tutor is giving some more information from themselves. What did you cover today? Passing the ball back again. We covered asking people questions. Have you ever heard about the catching and passing model? I have. What'd you think of it? Yeah, it's good. It's a bit weird actually thinking about it rather than doing it naturally. Now, as you can see, we've tagged particular utterances as either catching or passing. And the idea as we go forward is to support learners to catch, and that is to give some extra information about themselves to the other person, and then to pass the ball, which is to then ask the other person a question to keep the conversation going. Now the model looks something like this, catch, pass, catch, pass, and this can be printed out on a sheet of paper or in a variety of ways for the following activity. Materials and setup. 
a small group of learners seated and arranged in a circle and I certainly wouldn't exceed eight learners and usually these learners would be the learners with specific difficulties around conversational skills and those learners who are better at this I would uh, assign some other work for them. A ball of some sort and a marking sheet for each learner and the marking sheet is simply the diagram that you saw in the previous section. Now the instructions. Two learners are nominated to have a conversation and they stand. The person with the ball initiates by greeting the other person, shares a piece of information and then asks a question. And as they ask the question, they pass the ball to their partner. Now their partner of course has to accept the ball, catch the ball. They then have to share some information that relates to what the other person said and then ask a question and as they do so they pass the ball back. And so the ball really becomes the metaphor for the conversation going back and forth. The remainder of the group use tally points to note when the speaker has caught and then passed. And so what you find is it's a little bit clunky at the start but it gets better as it goes on. And the learners that are seated can look at their sheet and map the way the conversation is flowing back and forward and can mark points on it if they like and we'll talk about that in a moment. The group then gives feedback and the learners alternate so different people would then have a turn. Gamifying is a fairly new term that relates to turning activities and lessons into games where there are elements of competition and the idea is it makes it more fun and engaging. So here are three ideas for gamifying this particular model and activity. You know, if the learner takes longer than three to four seconds to catch or pass, they take a seat and another learner takes their place. Learners are not allowed to repeat questions. The conversation ought to be authentic, not formulaic. And that is, of course, one of the tricks with this activity. And one way to address this is to make sure that learners aren't just repeating the same kind of question over and over. Number three, practice on people outside the class without them knowing it and then give feedback to people in the class. So the idea is that perhaps lunchtime, these learners would go and initiate a conversation with a friend or a colleague, see how it goes, and then they can come and share their experiences back into the class. In summary, conversations require reciprocity to function. This requires receiving and giving. The crude metaphor of catching and passing can be used to illustrate this point to learners. Number two, the process needs to be practiced. Although it's clunky, the model of support learners to have better conversations with others. Number three, the process can be gamified and any opportunity to make it fun ought to be pursued. We encourage you to think of ways to make the catching and passing metaphor interesting and engaging for your learners. We hope this resource was helpful. Thank you.